الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. I thank you very much for uh, letting me to sit down with you today and to share some of my uh, feeling. It's feeling, it's not knowledge. Feeling is more important about the humanitarian work that you are doing. Because humanitarian work is not just a job that we do from 8 to 5 or from 8 to 8, 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening. It is a mission. It's a lifelong mission for any humanitarian worker that he or she decided to join uh, this movement. Humanitarian work is a message like the message of Islam, the message of Jesus, peace be upon him, the message of Moses who came to save the children of Israel, the message of justice, the message of rights of the people, the message of saving people, the message of supporting people. It's a message. It's a mission, lifelong mission. From now till you meet the Lord. Say, say inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> so this is how we feel towards the humanitarian work. If somebody would love to do a job, you can go to a company, to business, to anything, to industry, but not when we deal with the life of people. Humanitarian work has some principles, etiquette and manner and values. One of the principles of etiquette and the manner is respect. Mostly respecting the poor people that you are serving. Never ever look down at them. Because as we all believe that they pay our salary, they maintain our life through the donation that we are taking from the donors. Respect, respect, respect to every elderly, sick, disabled, Muslims or non muslim Let me give you something which you might not know. Islamically for uh, uh, Middle East is making a campaign for winter, isn't it? In Arabic. You know who is the uh, TV star who is actually on the campaign? Her name is Iman. And she's a TV presenter in Jazeera. Huh? Who is she? She's not a Muslim. She's Christian. I did not know that. From her name, it seems that she's a Muslim. She looks like you. Okay, like anyone. But she has the heart to drive the mission to help the people in Syria or in Yemen or everywhere. So humanitarian work does not have boundaries, does not have religion, does not have ceilings, but has all the way going with no ceiling, no border, no boundaries. You got it, yes. Mr. Luke? Yes, I do. Okay. And respect also to the elderly. You see, if you are young, what's the uh, name? Aya. Aya, Bismillah, mashallah. Aya, not because she has a master or she has a PhD, and I'm a very old man. I've been working in the organization for the last 40 years. She will come and look down at me. Oh, who is she? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? No, no. The respect goes from bottom up, top down. This side to this side, diagonal and circumferential. This is the respect. is a must. Humility. Humility means that actually to be humble to the boss, the boss should be humble to the to the, uh, uh, the workers and others. This is, a, this is some of the manners of, of the individuals who claim that they are trying to do the humanitarian work, to respect the donors, to respect the people in the community, to respect everyone and anyone. Okay, and I don't want to talk too much because I'm here for you to ask questions. I am here for you to ask questions, and I've got uh, some time to uh, 
to answer the questions. You're dealing with governments. You're dealing with donors. You're dealing with community. You're dealing with individuals. You're dealing with needy people. You have to be a multi-task individual. The individuals who can take more than one task and respond to this task instantly. Your knowledge, your heart, your feeling, your emotion, your belief. One of the great manners of the humanitarian worker is to believe, to believe a man in the work that you are doing. We have to believe, نؤمن بما نقوم به من أجل الفقراء. To believe in what we are doing to help the poor and the needy people. Iman or belief or faith is a cornerstone of our mission as a humanitarian worker. The young people should teach me and the old people should teach you. To be, this is the learning organization. They, they, they teach one another from bottom up and top down. Nobody amongst us is above the knowledge. Nobody is above, even I can take the knowledge from the cleaner or from the porter or from anyone because they might have a different knowledge to what I have. So I have to respect each and every one of them. No matter what is the degree or the experience or the position that I have. Humanitarian work is not about salary. Alhamdulillah, it's not about salary. You know what, brother Luke? The money we get from the organization, if there's a blessing from God to this little amount of money, there will be barakah. And this will be enough, not only for one, for two, for five, or ten, or twenty. Some of these blessings, especially for the married people, Actually, it comes in the education of the children. The children will excel in the school. In the health of the children, the children will be very healthy. In the le less fighting between the children and the parents. In the composition or actually the, the, the togetherness, the, togetherness of the family together. The bonding of the family. And instead of spending the money here and there, so with the little money, you can create a very strong family. Because this is what we call it in Arabic, baraka, and in English, blessing. Sah? Sah. So, we have a task to finish, whether it's for Syria, or for Yemen, or for, Myanmar, for uh, Rohingya, or for Yagur, or for uh, Sudan, or for Libya, or for any part of West Africa, East Africa, Somalia, Eritrea, anywhere and everywhere. We have to finish it. Not only finishing it, to excel Al-Ihsan. Al-Ihsan is to excel in what you do for the sake of what he gives you, the means to excel. Al-Ihsan huwa an nuhsin ma nam'amalahu min agli irda man a'atana Al-Ihsan likay nuhsin ila nas. You understand Arabic, huh? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Now I will stop and I will ask you to ask me questions. So because this becomes boring when I keep speaking. Yes, boss? Yes, of course. Do you start the first question? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, fine. Who can start the first question? Yes, Sister Dra. You want to ask a question? All right. Don't be shy. Uh, ask in French, ask in German, ask in Arabic, ask in English. We have all the languages. Just one second, I'll give you my thingy. Yes, Ibrahim, what's the question? Could you speak to us about the uh, most uh, amazing thing you saw? Most, most amazing things I saw? Yeah. You mean uh, achievement or... Uh, 
Yeah. The most amazing thing I saw, that the smile I saw on the faces of the people who have nothing as much as we have. You go to Sudan, you go to Bosnia, you go to different parts of Africa, you go to North Africa, you go to Pakistan, you go to India, you go to Bangladesh. This smile, true smile, not fake or real smile, on the faces of the poor people, what this smile gives you is satisfaction. And being living at ease in spite of the fact that their life is extremely hard. And you cannot live their life. Because if you go there, one day we were in South Sudan in a place called Warab, in a state called Wau. And we were sleeping in a small mud house, okay, which is full of all the insects. But the people who were living there were very happy to see you coming and shaking their hands. What they want from you, Brother Ibrahim, is to see you with them. So they feel that they are supported even if you don't have money to give or anything to do. So the smile there is different to the smile here in Europe and in America. We can draw a smile. Look at me. <laughs> it's not a true smile. That's why I used to invent this animal voices, Sister uh, Nawal. Mm -hmm. uh, Nawal, huh? Yes. <laughs> Again? Yes. Show them that you can do it. Bah. <laughs> when you do this with the children, the children cracks laughing. The father and the mother forget their poverty, forget their hardship. And you can see the true smile on their face. Draw a smile on the face of the needy is a key for heaven, for you and me, and for all of us. Yes, second question, Yalla <laughs> Suraya. Uh, how can I say less? Uh, I guess uh, all of us here uh, have a great admiration of all the work and the job you are doing. We are doing, not I am doing. Yes, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you are kind of inspiration, no? We are, <laughs> not I. You inspire us. <laughs> no, we are. You inspire me. It goes both ways. Uh, where do you find all this um, strength, la force, to do all what you are the doing? The force? Yes. La force. Because you are always traveling and you are so uh, implicated and involved and... And, yeah. Mission, yeah. and this mission, it's very unusual, so yeah. how can you deal with your family life and how do your family um, uh, support you Yes. Uh, and uh, help you to, yes. to realize all these things? Because it's very difficult to find um, equilibrium, balance, balance, balance yeah. equilibrium, family, equilibrium. Yes, yeah. family life and, yeah. and the dementia and life. There is good in goodness, and goodness comes from God. Good in goodness, and goodness is from God. This is, not, this is a fact, this is a basic foundation. Where I get my strength, or my force, maybe Jamal will tell you, since I've been working under him for the last 25 years, and I'm under the eyes of you, the Karima, for 25 years. The more you spend time and visit the poor people, the more you become powerful. Because you will be authorized by the children, by the women, by the sick, by the elderly. You will be carrying their dreams. If they let you to carry their dreams, it gives you the force that you are talking about. It doesn't let you to sleep. And in spite of the fact you sleep less than five hours a day, but you take the day, the next day, work 18, 20, 17 hours, a minimum. Even with forgetting the food, even with forgetting the drink, even with forgetting the means, because, you are, you are, you, because they give you the right to 
look to, to talk after them and they are, you are carrying their mission. So that's why I, I maybe I'll discuss it with Jamal when I was here last week, is you need to see the other side of the coin. But really, you need to see the poor people and make them happy. And you come back very inspired, not from me or Mark or Aya, but from those little children who have good running nose, sticky eyes, no shoes, dirty, but they look at you. The kind of look goes straight to the depth of your heart and they empower you and give you the strength. This is number two. Number three, I have a wife. You understand? And I'm the Zuga. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wife. And she is my backbone. And she is, if she is not, I could have not become sitting down with you here today. That's why when you get married, Mark, uh, Luke, sorry, not Mark. Not Mark. Because <laughs> Mark and Matthew and Luke and John. Huh? <laughs> the four disciples huh? of Jesus, peace be upon him. So when you marry, marry the one who will build your house, will protect you, support and raise your children, and keep you wherever you go with her prayer to you. And this is not, not to marry only the very beautiful one who looks like me. Because <laughs> I used to be a very handsome man when I was young. Huh? <laughs> when I put my photograph when I was young, a, month, a week ago or two years ago, ah, it cannot be you. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> I used to, it was on the Facebook. You got it? It, kind of, it was me. Unfortunately, there was no mustache and it was the hair. I used to have hair. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I started to marry my wife, I, my hair was going out. <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> and if we have a wife become your backbone, this exactly, this exactly is the source of your power at home. This is exactly the source of your power home. Even if, if the wife is the one who's going out, the husband has to be considerate. And they always give the example of Dr. Jamila from ICRC or IFRC. Her husband, both of them are medical doctors. It's named the Katra. Her husband is very considerate. She is in Geneva and he's in Malaysia. He's looking after the children and she's going to work in the United Nations and others. So this kind of relationship between husband and wife has to be there. If the wife is very active, she has to have a supportive, supporting husband. And the same for myself. So I give the credit to my wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The secret, Brother Luke, is your wife at home is very happy with what you do and she believes in your mission. If you have a mission, you have to marry the one who will help you to accomplish your mission. So you want me to find someone for you? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Why not? <laughs> Yes, anybody else? Yalla. Thank you, Sister uh, yeah, Trayer. Come on. Yalla, Muhammad. English, Arabic, Urdu, German, Turkish. French, Turkish. Yalla, <laughs> Hussain. Ask some of the questions you asked me when you were me in the car. Yes? I have one. Yes, Sister Mark. Yes. Yes. Um, what do you want for Islamic relief uh, for the future? <laughs> Very deep. <laughs> Once upon a time, uh, when was that, Jamal? Uh, maybe 20 years ago, somebody, when I was still working for Islamic Cliff, somebody asked me, We want you, what do you want to see Islamic Cliff as? We have got two organizations on earth, UN and the family of the IFRC, which is the Federation. 
I said I don't want to be like United Nations. Because the United Nations is a government organization. But we would like you to become like the movement of the Federation, the International Federation of Red Cross on this question, because they've got 180 branches and more. And they've got millions, tens of millions of volunteers. And they can reach to the most vulnerable before anybody else does. This was this this discussion was nearly about 20 years ago, maybe 10 years before I left, or nine years before I left the Islamic League in 2008. So in this organization, you have to have a dream. And the dream will drive you to see your vision. Because when you are dreaming, you have a vision. Then reality will make somebody like Aya or Luke and others to be able to fulfill this dream. Other dream, Sister Noel, is, that's why I'm, I'm very empowered by, by you, is to build on the younger generation, the 15, 17, 20, 21, 22. Because if we don't invest in people at this age, we we'll lose them. And it has to be like succession plans. You should invest with me because I am 15 years old now. <laughs> and you should take me by the hand and guide me and uplift me and elevate me. We are not very good at that. The volunteering system, which we need to build this and structure. It. And this is where I have to ask the organization to do it. It's not about training only. It's not about policy only. It's about human being that you should be nurturing at your age and at my children's age. So when they grow up, they feel that they have a purpose for life, to save life and serve humanity. This is my dream, which I want you in a while. Nisma, sister, breathe. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and Aya and Luke. Oh, sorry, Luke, yes. Luke, okay. Lucas, okay, Lucas. <laughs> Lucas, to, to Jamal should work on this. Because at least 50% of our community are under the age of 35. At least. If we put women and uh, young people together, we go above 75%. So first is young, young people. Second is women, to be empowered. As I mentioned to you before, I'm not sure if I mentioned this example to you when I was in South Africa. It's a story about a young girl who has two children. Her age was 16. In certain area, there's early marriage. There's no, in certain part of the world. But you know, where did she get the two children from? Who was the father? Any guess? Who was the father? Any guess? And that of Lerna and Dastasha Stana, Min al any guess? Make any guess. The neighbor. The neighbor. Okay, fine. Close. Go on. Brother, my father. Father. You see, I was, it was very painful. The first was father, the second was uncle. That means our work to protect our younger generation is immense. Is big challenge. It's not only in this part of the world, it's everywhere. Everywhere. So we have to look after our younger generation, and because you have the energy, you do better than myself. Because you run. You have the feeling, but you need somebody to give me your hand to hold you by the hand from the experience. So you go back to one of our sisters here, or to Jamal, or to others, tell you, how, what did you do? how did you do this before? That's why it's like the relay team. So this is my dream, to invest in you, to invest in women, inshallah, as well as to look at the very small problem Inside, even, you know, inside Switzerland, there's a lot of problem. But sometimes we don't address the local problem, which we call the domestic program. 
Most the program has to be done in Canada and America and different parts of the world because there's still poor people and people need help. Thank you, Nawal. Anybody else, brothers and sisters? Get excited. Um, I don't know how to say. How can you um, manage or support um, that you can't help all the people if you are um, in, in the field? And you know that you can't help all these Rohingyas. Yeah. I think there's something which makes you frustrated. How can you manage to live and seeing maybe one million people need help and you only have food for 10,000? That's what I'm saying. Very challenging. Very challenging. Never become frustrated. Because God said, Allah will not, will not let you to do what's beyond your capability and your capacity. Okay? So do what you can and leave the rest for the Creator. Because the Creator is more merciful than you and me and Mar and, and the locusts. We think that, oh God, why really? Cool down. God divided the mercy into 100 parts. He gave one or 10 parts of the whole humanity and he kept the 90% for himself. Huh? 99. 99. One and 99. You can imagine how much you love your children. At the end, you love your children. You can give your life from your children, right? صح؟ How much you love your children? You see, you can give your life to protect your children and this one percent. But God has a 99 percent. But God for wisdom, he delays the decision. Because when the decision comes, it will establish community. Establishing community is not like this. That's why we learn from the way that God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, created the world. You could have just done, said, oh, world, be like this. Okay? But he made it in seven days, and, and, and in Islam, one day before God is equivalent, equivalent to 50,000 years. Really? Yeah, that's what's written in the Quran. One day is equivalent to 50,000 years. Okay. Of what we count. You say that? What do you mean? Just yani, how, 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 how long is the day now? 24 hours. Yes. This 24 hours before Allah mm -hmm. is 50,000 years of yours. Mm. Okay. Mm. And more. more. That's why when you look at actually the creation of the mountains and the land and the moon and the stars and all the galaxies, you could have done it like this. No. But he did it gradually to let us understand that nothing happening just like this, in spite of the fact he has the power to let us to understand it takes time. Give you the example. I, yeah, you have, you, you are pregnant now. I mean, how long will it take till the baby comes out? Nine months. Nine months. Will your child go to the university the day he comes out from you? Or it have to go to schools, primary schools, preparatory schools, secondary schools, and, and will your child become a doctor, a professor, or an engineer, or an army officer in a year or two? This is the gradualism in life. But sometimes, sister, you want something, like, ah! You have 10 pounds, you can give what you have. But ask God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make barakah in it. You might find somebody coming from a distance to give you another 10 pounds and 50 pounds. You know what, Brother uh, uh, Lucas and uh, all of you? The first donation for us was 20 pence, as Jamal was talking before. We never ever realized that one day we'll be here talking to somebody like you, or in Germany, or in Italy, or in Switzerland, and or actually in America, or in Canada, or others. But it takes time. It takes time. So do what you can with what, what you can 
to help whom you can. And you are not responsible to serve humanity. He is responsible to serve humanity. And never ever become distressed or upset. If you are satisfied with the 10 pounds, he will give you 1,000 pounds. Then 1 million pounds. The biggest donation we received, Akbar Tabarro Astalam Nafi Augustus Alf in August 1984, just nine, uh, August and seven, seven months after we started working, 1,000 pounds from a doctor who was Libyan, from Dirna, who was a friend of mine. We were in, 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 the, in, in the prayer hall, oh, we could not believe that we have 1,000 pounds. After seven months of work, then you spend more than a billion pounds now over the last 35 years. Okay, thank you, sister. Yes? I uh, like to ask you if uh, Islamic Relief can uh, do something for, for the Uyghur in, in, uh, in China. Is it possible? Yeah. Uh, and this is Jamal, maybe we'll better answer this. You see, Islam, our first visit to China was in August 19, no, August 2001. It was Mustafa Osman and myself. And we went to Xinjiang. The relationship at the time was not as bad as, bad as we can see today, unfortunately. Islamic Cliff is still having an office there. But this area, unfortunately, becomes a no-go area to humanitarian organization. What you need to tell us, can we make, through advocacy, a pressure on governments inside the United Nations to let them to help those people in this area? You see, we are governed, unfortunately or fortunately, by United Nations regulation. And can OIC, the Organization of Islamic uh, Co Cooperation, stand up and do something, you see, to try to help those people, okay? Can, can other organizations like European Union and others and human rights start to do, not only for them, I, I take you from the Muslim side of it to the Christian side of it in actually in... Uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the highest trade of young girls and women in this area. And most of them are not Muslims, but nobody talks about them, unfortunately. Here, we need Brother Lucas and uh, Sister uh, Aya. Here, what we need to do to make awareness to bring the facts and figures to the political decision makers, to let them wake up and stand up for those people, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. It's not only in Yavor, it's different parts. In Yemen. In Yemen, they are Muslims, isn't it? And uh, you know who is dropping the bombs in Yemen? We know that. In Syria, same as well. But in different parts, South Sudan, South Sudan is, is a nightmare. South Sudan, about 60 to 70% are, yani, I think about 40 to 50% are Christian, about 20 to 30% are uh, no religion, and 30% are Muslim. But the fight inside South Sudan is incredible. There's no warning to villagers. The spirit come with the guns and kill from the age of two, three years to whatever age. So we have to stand up, not for everybody and anybody, anywhere. But actually we have to talk to the people. Like, well, well, that's actually, I ask you this question, Lucas, about advocacy. I ask you this question, uh, uh, Aya and Nawal. I told them, advocacy as a house, it has to have a pillar and foundation. Do we know how to do advocacy? Advocacy, that's what you need to do. Advocacy and support the advocacy organization who can raise the flag of all the oppressed people in the globe. Advocacy, advocacy, advocacy. And the advocacy in Quran called Hadd. 
حد سورة المعون ولا يحد على طعام المسكين. And if, if your duty, Brother Lucas, is to, to spread the news of the needs of the needy. This is in our in, in Quran, inshallah. So advocacy. Yes, brothers? No, I was explaining what advocacy is in French. So you understand. Advocate. Advocacy. Advo- ah, advocato. Avocato. <laughs> Inshallah. Yes, sister. I'm a Habiba. Yes, I would like to ask you if it's very um, difficult to see that the amount of people who are in need in the world are increasing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Carry on. It's my question. How do you deal also with that? And then how to decide where you're going to help first? As I said before, You see, if you divide the resources on the number of people on earth, you find that they're more than enough. More than enough. If you go to the African countries, they are more wealthy than Switzerland, than Britain, than France. But there's a system. The system is making corruption to become a system. Because if corruption becomes a system, those big companies will be able to steal the wealth and the resources of those poor countries who have got very uneducated people or do not have a proper structure in the, organ- and in, the, and in, in, in the government and in the civil society sector. This is what's happening. If we look as a, as a fact, Africa is the richest place on earth but look at the African countries and you need here brother Lucas to look at behind those rich non-African countries taking the oil, the gas the uranium, the gold and the, the uranium, the gold, the cobalt and everything you have to ask this question to yourself but coming back To the more we have corruption, the more we have poverty, the more we have theft, and the more we have all these problems coming to us. Because the, 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 the problems that are facing us are three. Conflict, because of the war. Natural disasters, like flooding, earthquake, volcano, or uh, this desertification, climate change. And the third one is the corruption. Okay. So we need to look at this and fight the corruption. See, it's not just only giving hand out. As I come back to conclude with this, don't worry about the increased number of the people that actually want to help. Do what you can. Even if you don't have any resources, just make a prayer for them. If you don't have any resources, just speak about them. You know this flower which I used to wear? It does not only represent the massacre in Srebrenica, which happened 25 years ago. It represents the massacre of anyone. Anyone and each one and everyone. From the concentration camp by the Nazi in Germany and the Poland and others, to the Rohingya, to the Bosnian, to the people in DRC, to everywhere. So if you cannot do, if you don't have the money, you have your tongue, you have your Facebook, you have your photograph, you can tweet, you can send a message to raise the awareness. But don't sit doing nothing. Don't sit doing nothing. And don't worry about the results. You are responsible for your action. But God will, is the one who will be giving the action a result or not. At least when you meet with him, Sister Aya, when you meet with Allah, you tell, uh, with God, you tell him, I've done my duty. But I failed. There's no harm of failing. You see? Because it's in his hand. But you have been, at least you keep trying and trying and trying and trying. Yes, Brother Muhammad. Sister, uh, 
Nesma. Nesma. If you have um, one advice for young people to, who wanted to become a humanitarian worker, what it will be? An advice. If young people like you and younger, first of all, when you have less responsibility for getting married, keep traveling. Keep learning not only from the office, learning from the people. Even if you don't travel abroad and you are living in a, in, in a country which is poor, go around the different streets and different avenues and different ghettos and see how the people are living to thank God of what he has given you. I always remember my mother, may Allah bless her soul, uh, she, uh, she looks like me, remember her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she, but she was more beautiful than me. She always used to say to me, don't look up. You'll have a neck ache and headache. Mix with the poor people to feel happy of what God has given you. Because if you mix with the rich ones, you will be saying, oh my God, I want to wear the same brand, the same trouser, the same t-shirt, and have money. That's why always mix with the people who are less than you. And this is what you need to tell the young people. Go and see how privileged you are and how much that actually are blessed by God who give you too much. But if you go and sit down with the millionaires, of course you'll be upset. So this is number one. Keep going around. Keep mixing. See, one of the statements of Jesus, peace, why, why, call, why they call Jesus Messiah? Anybody knows? Messiah. What the, what the, what the, what the meaning of the word Messiah? Al-Masih. Anybody knows? The one who brings the good... Uh, uh, this, is, this is actually later, later on, but the Messiah... Um, for, like speaking for the poor people, no? No, this is, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you are going out so far. Messiah in Arabic means the, the whole Masih. Al Masih, Masih. Masah, Yamsah, Masahan. The one who sweeps the land to spread his message before he became a king or whatever, bring the good news. He's sweeping the land. For you, young men and young women, before you have more responsibility, Sweep the land. Take the people by the hand. And listen to the elderly. Listen to the elderly. This elderly could be your father, your mother, or the people in the organization. If you are young enough, ask them to send you to Africa, to Asia, to Latin America. Because the more you be with those people, the more you come back as a leader. With knowledge, with mission, with vision, and with a dream to fulfill for those people. My advice to you is travel. Listen. Sometimes then people don't listen. <laughs> they don't listen. Because everything, ah, while you are talking to them, they stop you. I know that. And sometimes, every time I tell them, I know it. Okay, just listen to me. I might have given you, I know it. So be cool and listening to the people actually who are less than yourself, listen to education, listen to experience, but they have the knowledge. Okay? Because office can teach you the system, but the field will teach you the mission and the message and the vision and the values of the people, which you cannot sometimes find it in the office. Yes, brothers and sisters, Sister was hiding behind Mariam. Lady Mary, she is Lady Mary. Yeah? <laughs> yes. No question. No question. Say anything. <laughs> yeah, Bismillah. Anybody else? I found that the sisters are more active than the brothers, and the brothers are sleeping. There is more sister. <laughs> uh, uh, these two brothers did not open their mouth. Ah, uh, opening it? Anyone else?
عربي انجليزي كلام بالعربي يلا يا هيا والله ما عندي سؤال انت نوال يلا يا سريا ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ها نون ما كويشن اي ثينك ذات جست ثانك يو فور اول ذيس بلوك ذا موتيفيشن سبيتش يو اولويز سبيتش سو تيك تيك ذيس وان ثانك ايفري بودي سو ان 2020 وي ويل اول جو تو افريكا تو ايشا Revolution, huh? Thor. <laughs> the Um, I would say um, sometimes yeah. we forget um, why we are working here in Islamic Relief, and it's good to have this kind of reminder and uh, and to remember why we are we are here. Sure. So thank you very much. You. you want to say anything else like this, in different languages? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ahmed. I know that you want to say something to conclude. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, my English is not so well. The French, French, French. <laughs> not even the French. <laughs> German, 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 German. German, German, okay. German, German. You can choose one Allemand. Yeah, go on. German, German, German. Swiss German? Yes, I speak I can, any language. I can even. <laughs> Also, wir sind mega froh, dass der Dr. Hani heute da ist und dass er uns, er hat uns viel gegeben hat, von dem, was er erlebt hat. Und ähm, es braucht solche Leute wie ihn, weil sonst kann man nie etwas auf die Beine stellen. Und ähm, wie Zora ja gesagt hat, manchmal ähm, vergessen wir, warum wir hier sind. Unsere ganze Arbeit ist eigentlich nur, für, die, für den armen Leuten zu helfen. Schukra. French? Oh, English. Thank, thank you for everything, for your for your speech, and to give uh, to give your feeling and to motivate the the group and to 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 work better. Thank you. Arabic. Yalla, ay. Zeki. Tab shukran la hadrata kino ejet shufti na. Kalimun nasbo. Samjandouf. Uh, وأنا حبيت كتير الاستاج تبعي هون تعلمت حاجات كتير يعني كبرت معاكم وشكرا يلا أنا وين فرنش فين فرنش ما بقول سبيك فرنش so ben merci uh, de nous avoir uh, tous uh, redonné toute motivation et euh, nous donner raison ce pourquoi nous sommes là aujourd'hui. Merci. Non, pour ma part, je ne vais pas redire ce qui a été dit, mais euh, merci beaucoup déjà d'être venu, euh, de toujours euh, être présent et euh, de toujours être euh, là euh, pour nous rappeler euh, voilà, notre mission ici et euh, toujours encourager les jeunes. Pour moi, c'est une priorité et euh, merci beaucoup de, de délivrer ce message euh, encore et encore. Merci. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala n'yataqabbal amina wa minkum. On espère que marchez dans vos pas, inshallah. Et sur le chemin, inshallah. We hope to follow you and uh, your brothers in uh, this, uh, this way. Inshallah. Amen. Do it <تصفيق> يعني انا في الاول جزاك الله خير دكتور هاني حاب اشكرك على قدومك وعلى هذه الكلمه بصراحه ونسال الله عز وجل يبارك فيكم اواكم الله وتقبل منكم 
Türkçe de benim Türkçe de iyi değil. Çok, çok pardon yani. Ee, çok teşekkürler. Allah razı olsunuz. Ben çok memnun yani. Seni ben seni seviyorum. Allah razı olsunuz. Eyvallah. Eyvallah. <gülüyor>
Now, <laughs> in the past, in the past, okay. in the past. Inshallah, I see you are happy. I will ask him to come here every day. <laughs> Inshallah. Jazakallah. Salaamu alaikum. Shukran. Okay.